Hallelujah. We give you glory. Welcome to church. Lift up your hands and worship our God. Lift up your hands and worship our God. Lord, we lift your name on high. My God. My God, lift up your voice. We are in the presence of our God. Give me praise this morning. Hallowed be his name. We give God glory. We give God glory. Bless the name of the Lord. 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 Somebody bless the name of the Lord. Every other name fade away this morning. Give him praise. Give him glory. Give him praise. In the name of Jesus. Give him praise. Give him praise. We are here to praise our God. Give him glory. My God, we bless your name. We bless your name. All the other names made away, Lord Jesus. We give you glory. Bless his holy name. So there is only you. Every name shall praise our God. Lift up your hands in your room, worship the Lord. Jesus, take your place. My God, Jesus, take your place. Let all the other names fade away. Somebody bless the Lord. Somebody exalt the Lord. Somebody magnify the Lord. In your rooms, lift up your hands. Open up your mouth and worship the Lord. God, we should bless you for trying it this morning. We are in a moment of worship. We are saying, let every day fade away. In this season, where our hope is lost, what we trust that is failing us, let every day fade away. Tell Jesus, you take your place. Jesus, take your place. My God. My God, we bless your holy name. We bless your holy name. I want you to lift up your hands to the Lord most high. Declare that he is God. Declare that he is mighty. Declare that he is sovereign. Come on, give him praise this morning. My God. Jesus, take your place. Jesus, take your place. I want you to worship the Lord. He is how you lift it up. He is how you lift it up. He is how you lift it up. Jesus, it's only you. Jesus, our systems are failing us. Technology is failing us. Government cannot handle it. Take your place. Take your place, Lord. I want you to lift up your voice and begin to bless God. Lift him up in the comfort of your home. Begin to lift him up in the comfort of your home. Begin to say, Jesus, my rise is on you. Jesus, my trust is in you. Jesus, my confidence is in you. When all other things are failing, I look to you, Jesus. I look to you, Jesus. I look to you, my man, my God. I look to you, my Redeemer. Lift up your voice and bless the name of the Lord. We give you all the praise. My God, we bless you. People of God, I want you to lift up your voice and thank him that you are alive. Over a thousand people dead in UK, you are alive. Over 500 million people contracting coronavirus, you are not affected. Lift up your voice and lift him up. Jesus, we, we lift you up, oh God. We lift you up, oh God. We lift you up, oh God. We declare 
in the spirit and so via technology we thank you that the church has gathered you have said where two or three are gathered in your name there you are we have gathered via technology on the various platforms as we share this broadcast you are in our midst and where two or three are gathered in your name there you are so we are confident that you are here with us and your name shall be exalted. Have your way in this service. Touch lives, heal lives, deliver lives. Bring refreshing hope, confidence to your church, your people. 
Anyone watching who is not saved, I pray that by this medium of this technology, your spirit shall enter their home to their phones, their television. In the name of Jesus, I bring salvation to them. Thank you, Lord, that this service shall lead to the transformation of lives. The, the, the confidence of people lifted up, the joy of the Lord renewed in our hearts, and the power of God released in our lives. Have your way, Jesus, and be glorified this morning. In Jesus' name, the sick shall be healed, the poor shall be made rich, the confused shall be encouraged. In Jesus' name, amen. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. I want to apologize for the late start, a few technical issues, but the devil is a liar. Church is still going on, and we thank you all for being patient with us and joining us in our service today. We believe and know that God shall do a tremendous thing in our lives, and I want to welcome everybody to our online uh, uh, church this morning. I welcome my ICGC Greater Grace Temple family. You are welcome. Each church, wherever you are, we miss you. I know that you are keeping good and God is with you and his hand is upon you. We know that you went through the fasting and something has happened to you. It's good to connect with you. Though we are not meeting physically, spiritually, I am in your room and you are here with us. And together, we shall terrify the devil and the devil shall be horrified in Jesus' mighty name. We extend a special welcome to all our friends who are also joining us today, who are not members of Greater Grace Temple, but you are here online doing church with us today. I pray that the blessings of the Lord will reach you and the word of the Lord will bring transformation into your life. Hallelujah. It is a joy to see that God is still handling the affairs of our world. His power is moving. His glory is at work. And only his name shall be lifted up. Every other name shall fade away. Technology is fading away. Government have no clue. Politicians have lost the plot. But Jesus still sits upon the throne. And soon and very soon, he is going to give us a miracle. Soon and very soon, all eyes will be lifted to him to say that he alone is God over all the earth. Hallelujah. And we want to thank God for the life of our general overseer, Dr. Mesa Otabo. And our raising overseer here in the United Kingdom, Reverend Edwin Donko, God bless you for your leadership and your guidance of our lives. We have come this far by connecting to the grace upon you. And we know that every member connected to ICGC, the Greater Grace Temple family, and all our friends and family, as we stream in today, the blessing from our Father, Dr. Mason Tabo, comes on us. In that same vein, we want to make our 2020 declaration as given to us by our father, Dr. Mason Tabo. I believe he's a prophet of God, and the words out of his mouth carry power. So our year of excellence, you want to say, out of Zion, the perfection of beauty, God shines forth. The Lord my God causes the righteous to shine forth as the sun. His awesome hand has formed me. His creative spirit inspires my mind. He skillfully guides my hands. Therefore, I boldly declare I am set apart for excellence. The ruler of the universe, he has exalted my horn among the nations. He sets my feet on high. In his strength I rise. By faith I press forward towards the prize of my highest calling. I believe in my heart and confess with my mouth that Jesus is Lord. He is the vine. I am the branch. In him I abide. In him I blossom. As it is written, God who commanded light out of darkness has shone his light in our heart. We have his treasure in earthen vessels, the, ex the excellence of the power may be of God and not of us. In this year, 2020, I commit to excellence. I commit to exceptionalism. I commit to do the extraordinary in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Hallelujah. We've got but a short moment, but I'm trusting God that the word of the Lord will come to you in 30 minutes. And your life will never be the same again. It doesn't take a prophet to tell you that we are living in difficult times. You don't need the eye of prophecy to know. All around us, there is evidence of calamity. All around us, there is a sign of turbulence. Many people are worried and concerned about what tomorrow may bring. However, as a child of God, as a child of God, 
my GGT family, my church family online, I came to assure you that though there is peri loss, there is calamity, there is confusion around us, it is not time to be afraid. I spoke two weeks ago about looking unto Jesus. Last week I spoke about hope down in God. Because until you can look to Jesus in this season, and until you can hope down in God, everything around you will let you fret. Everything around you will let you be afraid. But I want you to know that if you are anchored in the Lord, you don't need to be afraid. Because there is a difference from your life. This morning God came to be Send me to come and show you that you are different though your skin looks the same like everybody. You are different though you are living in the same economy. You are different though there are people dying and contracting COVID-19. You have to know, Bible says they know not, neither do they understand. Psalm 82. It also says that they shall know the truth and the truth they know shall set them free. This morning I came with truth to let you know that you are not just living in this country, this nation, this world. You are a citizen of a place called Goshen. And my message to you is I am living in Goshen. I want you to tell your neighbor in your house I am living in Goshen. Hey, tell your child, let your child know, I am living in Goshen. I want you to tap your chest and tell yourself, I live, I am a citizen of Goshen. I am not a citizen of the world. What is the hope and guarantee of a child of God? In the midst of this chaos, in the midst of this pestilence, it is, it, it is the fact that we dwell in Goshen, that we dwell in in a place of safety with God that will guarantee and the difference in your life. I'm going to show you a few scriptures today. All through the week when I was fasting and praying, I was just studying the plague that happened in the time of Moses with Pharaoh. And I could see that though the plague was going on, there was a group of people who were exempted. There was a, a group of people who did not face the same thing the Egyptians were facing. And this morning, I'm going to tell you, though we live in the world, the world that can be can looked at as Egypt, the world that could be looked at as a, as a sinful world, well, now everybody is crying for forgiveness. Everybody is bowing their knees. Before everybody prays, we are asking God to forgive us. Before, we would just go in and start praying in tongues because we felt all right. But now even the righteous of the righteous are asking for sin, forgiveness of sin before they pray. Because everybody is worried. Everybody is scared. Everybody doesn't know, do I stand well with Christ? But as long as your heart does not condemn you, as long as your conscience does not condemn you, as long as you know that you are living right for God as long as you know that you have given your life to Jesus and you are faithfully serving him I came to tell you there is an exemption clause on your life you are not just an inhabitant of the world within the world within this Egypt God has hidden you and kept you in a place called Goshen. And this morning we are going to look at what it means to belong to those who belong to Goshen in the name of Jesus. Goshen is a place where you dwell that the evil of your land don't touch you. Goshen is the place where you dwell and you operate under a different law. In, in Genesis chapter 45 verse 10, when, when Joseph's brothers have sold him into slavery and then uh, all the way from Genesis 37, 39, and then he, he rose up from prison, he dreamt, and, and, and Pharaoh had a dream and he interpreted it, and, and so Potiphar, he interpreted all that, and he was made to, 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 to be the prime minister of Egypt. The Bible says the other day that the famine, and then he interpreted there'll be famine, and there'll be seven good years and seven bad years, and when the bad years came, his siblings, they left to go to Egypt to go and buy food. And when they met their brother, the brother knew that this is my siblings. And he said, how is our father and all that? And you know the story? He, they, he gave them food. He put their money back in their basket, in, in, in their bags. They went and he told them that as you go, I want you to go and bring your last brother. He spoke about Benjamin because he hadn't seen Benjamin before. And, and they went and the father was sad. He said, look, my son, my beloved son is dead. This other last child of mine, you were going to take him away. Mm -hmm. And then, and then uh, one of the children stood and said, yes, I, I will guarantee that we will bring your son back. They went. But Bible says when they went, Joseph could not hold it when he saw his brothers. 
when he saw Benjamin, he broke down and he revealed his identity to them. And he told them something. He said, look, I want you to go back and go and bring old man. I want you to go and call pops back down here because that dream that I dreamt way back has come to pass. I am not a slave. I am not dead. Though my coat of many colors was smeared with black by my brothers, I am alive because though they meant it for evil, God meant it for good. I came to tell you, though COVID-19 is, 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 is doing some people harm, for you and your household, it shall work for your good because God in his supernatural way is realized and rearranging things that will work for you. There are some realms you could not attain. After this storm is over, you will realize that I am not an Egyptian. I am an Israelite living in Goshen. I am not living in the world only. I am standing on a ground that is fruitful, a ground that yields fruit, a land that bears fruit. All else might fade. All else might collapse. Things might not be working well, but as long as I am a citizen of heaven, I am a child of God, I dwell and I'm, I live in Goshen. I don't live in Egypt. My God. And, 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 and Genesis 45 verse 10 says, You will leave, Joseph was telling his brothers, You will live in the land of Goshen. My God. And you will be close to me. And so Goshen means draw near, close to me. And I came to tell you, you are living close to God. Bible says you are hidden in Christ and in God, which means that what cannot touch God cannot touch you. What cannot touch Jesus cannot touch you. Even to the effect that for the devil to touch you, he first of all has to touch God and touch Christ and then touch you. My God. Their protocols before you can be raised is too much. That is why I came to let you know, have confidence that I am not an ordinary citizen of this world. I am a blood-bought child of God. And because of that, the laws around my life are different. Amen. You will live in the land of Goshen. Amen. And you'll be close to me. Genesis 45, 10. You and your children and your grandchildren, your flocks, your heads, and all you have. In the land of Goshen, he said, go and call old man. You are coming to Egypt. Amen. But in the land of Egypt, you will be living in a place called Goshen. What happens in Goshen? And there I will sustain and provide for you. So that you and your household and all that are yours may not come to poverty. There in the land of Goshen. And that is why I came to live the faith of somebody. I know that as we are isolated, some people are worried, crying, desperate and, and desperate. They don't know what is happening next. Social media is not helping us. News are flying left, right, center. Theories and conspiracy theories upon theories. Fallacies are coming. Death rates are coming. Eh, eh, eh. Infected statistics are coming. But I came to tell you, you don't dwell just in the land. There is a hand of God upon you that keeps you and separates you. And there I will sustain you and provide for you so that you and your household and all that and all that are yours may not come to poverty and want. For there are yet five more years of scarcity and starvation. So God was saying, Goshen is where you dwell. And I came to prophesy to you, you are not just a citizen of this world. Bible says you are in this world, but you are not of this world. Which means there is a mark of God upon your life. Disaster cannot come near you. That is why the Bible says, thousand may fall at your side. Ten thousand by your right hand. It shall not come near you. Only with your eyes. Why? Because you do not just living in this world. You are in Goshen. And in Goshen, where you are drawn near to God, you are close to God. The calamities of the world cannot afflict your life. You are exempted from the perplexities that afflict people. You might see it in my head, but have the faith that I am a citizen of Goshen. I am living in Goshen and my land will be fruitful. I will have food. I will have supplies. I will have provisions. The Lord will be my portion. Goshen means drawing here. On the other hand, Egypt is a type of a wealth system that has no respect for God. And we know that our world has dis disobeyed God. Our world has gone against God. We have approved the abominable. 
We have signed laws to perpetuate and accept things God has disapproved. And so, in this season, if it is God who has allowed it or not, I don't care. But it doesn't take anybody to let you know that evil has permeated our world. Egypt, the system of Egypt has taken over our world. When you read um, Genesis, uh, is it 80 there about? No, no, no. Sodom and Gomorrah time. Bible says that the men who went, they said that there are some angels who have come here. We want to sleep with them. My God. That was the terrible atrocity. And God told a lot. And Abraham said, I will separate you. I will separate you. You shall escape this plague that is coming. Why? Because you are not just a member of the land. You dwell in Goshen. Goshen is a symbol of being in God's will. In spite of the surrounding ungodly system. It is a symbol, a typology of being in God's will. In spite of the surrounding ungodly system. We live in a nation. America, Bibles were banned from schools. Gay was approved in different countries. Letters and things were taking control. God sense symbolizes an oasis in a desert. An oasis in a desert. A place where there is nourishment in a dry land. And it talks about light in the darkness. So as you dwell in Goshen, there may be darkness around you, but light will shine upon you. It is even, and, and even prosperity in the midst of recession. Hope in the midst of fear. Confidence in the midst of despondency. That is what happens in Goshen. It reminds us of the Goshen. reminds us of the fact that there is a divine nourishment for us, even in a time of famine and chaos. And I came to tell you, you are not just an ordinary person. You are a citizen of, of Goshen. I am living in Goshen. And because of that, my life is a different. Now, let me show you a few scriptures. I, I like scriptures a lot. And I'm going to show you three scriptures in Exodus. And, and, and then I'll talk from there. In Exodus chapter 9, verse 1 to 6. He says, then the Lord said to Moses, this was when the plague was, was enforced and, and the ten plagues were rolling. I want to use for, I want to start from now. Then the Lord said to Moses, go to the people. Go. The Lord said, well, go to Pharaoh and tell him, just say the Lord God of the Hebrews, let my people go that they may serve me. If you refuse to let them go and still hold them, behold, the hand of the Lord will fall upon your livestock, which are out in the field, upon the horses, the donkeys, the camels, the heads, and the flocks. There shall be a very severe plague. There shall be a COVID-19 experience. But look at verse 4. But the Lord shall make a distinction between the livestock of Israel and the livestock of Egypt. My God, there shall be a plague. But verse 4 of Exodus 9 says, But the Lord shall make a distinction between the livestock of Israel and the livestock of Egypt, and nothing shall die of all that belongs to the Israelites. My God, that is the promise of God unto you. Nothing shall die of them that belong to the Israelites. As a child of God, blood bought, you have to wake up and tell yourself, I shall not lose anything in this pandemic. I shall not die in this pandemic. Stop testing yourself and using an app to test. Listen, Bible says, Job said, what I fear has come upon me. You have to wake up. Even when you come, you say, thanks be to God who given me the victory. I shall not die. I shall live to declare the words of the Lord. None in Zion shall say that I am sick. There is some things you have to tell yourself other than that fear will grip your heart God says I will make a distinction and this is the time that all your labor in the Lord will show if you have not served God faithfully, I want you to quickly repent and spend some time and see God. But if you have been seeking God, faithfully serving Him, doing the work of God, winning souls, praying, studying the Bible, living a righteous life, honoring God with your tithe and your offering, this is the time the plague will not come near you. Many of us have said, I've paid tithe, I've not seen anything. This is the time it will show. That the Israelites, I will make a distinction between them. And God is about to make a distinction. Your next door neighbor will, will be afflicted and affected, but it shall not come near you. Only with your eyes you shall see the deliverance of the Lord. Only with your eyes you shall see the salvation of my God. 
He said, nothing shall die of all that belong to Israel. Verse 5, and the Lord set the time saying, tomorrow the Lord will do this thing in the land. Look at verse 6. And the Lord did that the next day. And all kinds of the livestock of Egypt died. But look at this. But of the livestock of the Israelites, not one died. Jesus. Of the livestock of those who dwell, the Israel who dwelt with the Lord, drawn now in Goshen, none died. Exodus 9, 22, 26. The Lord told, said to Moses, stretch forth your hand toward the heavens that there may be that, 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 that there may be hail in all the land of Egypt upon man and beast and upon all the vegetation of the field throughout the land of Egypt. Then Moses stretched it to them. Moses stretched for his, his rod towards the heavens. And the Lord sent thunder and hail and fire and lightning running down to and along the ground. And the Lord rained hail upon the land of Egypt. Coronavirus can be, can be likened to hail. 24. So there was hail and fire flashing continually in the midst of the weighty hail, such as had not been in all the land of Egypt since it became a nation. I told my wife at the dining table, babe, I am 45 years. I have never experienced this in my life. I am a moving, I'm like, I'm like a machine. I don't stop to stay at home and just to be there. No, not working, not evangelizing, not doing the work of God. Everything has come down. Nothing like this has happened before. But look at 25. The hill struck down throughout all the land of Egypt. Everything that was in the field, both man and beast. And the hail beat down all the vegetation of the field and shattered every tree of the field. Look at 26. This is the promise of those who are living in Goshen. Only in the land of Goshen. Makatusa in the gradices. Only in the land of Goshen, where the Israelites were, was there no hail? My God, I came to tell somebody you are not an ordinary person living in this world. There is a glory upon your head, there is a covering upon your head, there is a divine hand upon your life that separates you from the disaster in our world. There is a word over your life for which sake you cannot die, for which sake you cannot be destroyed, for which sake you cannot be a victim of the plague. Only in the land of Goshen, where the Israelites were, was there no hail. Go to Exodus 10, 20 to 24. But the Lord made Pharaoh's heart more strong and obstinate and will not let the Israelites go. God will do these things. He will see, he will ask for forgiveness. No, 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 pray to intervene. They pray and then he will still keep on doing it. And the Lord said to Moses, stretch out your hand toward the heavens. And then Exodus 10, 20, 24. And that there may be darkness over the land of Egypt. And darkness which may be felt. So Moses stretched out his hand towards the sky. And for three days, a thick darkness was all over the land of Egypt. Listen to verse 23. The Egyptians could not see one another. Nor did anyone rise from his place for three days. But all the Israelites had natural light in their dwelling. I I feel happy when I read the scriptures. I don't fear because I know that there is an exemption. My case is different. Hey, don't high five up your neighbor. Look at your friend in your room. Tell your children our case is different. Tell your husband, honey, our case is different. It looks like everything is going bonkers and crazy. But our case is different. But only the Israelites had the natural light in their dwelling. Kayadosa. And Pharaoh called to Moses and said, go serve the Lord. God did it so obviously so that they could know that they were a different species of people. My final one in Exodus. Let me look at my time. My final one in Exodus. Exodus 11. 1 to 7. I need a verse 7, but I want to build a story. Then the Lord said to Moses, Yet I will bring one plague more on Pharaoh and on Egypt. Afterwards, he will let you go. When he lets you go from here, he will trust you out altogether. Speak now in the hearing of the people, and let every man solicit and ask of his neighbor, and every woman of her neighbor, jewels of silver and jewels of gold. And the Lord gave the people favor. So even in this pandemic, there is a favor embedded in it. Why are we home and we'll be paid? 
Many of us, we have works. Uh, we don't even take days off. But now God says, I am giving you a natural Sabbath. Stay at home and sleep and I'll pay you. It is favor. One of my, of, 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 of my guys was telling me, man of God, everybody in my workplace has been laid off except me and my boss. I said, that is the benefit of your titan offering. You cannot serve God. Some of them might not return. And he was telling me, if I handle the contract well, I'm sure after this there will be promotion for me. That is the singleness of God separating you and making you a difference. And the Lord gave the people favor in the sight of the Egyptians. Moreover, moreover, the man Moses was exceedingly great in the land of Egypt in the sight of Pharaoh's servant and other people. And Moses said, Thus says the Lord, about midnight I'll go out into the midst of Egypt, and all the firstborn in the land, the pride, hope, and joy of Egypt shall die from the firstborn of Pharaoh. People are dying. Don't prepare your will and say, I will also die. I am living in Goshen. So there is something different about my life. You shall not contract the sickness. You will cough. Just go and boil you some hot water. Put some honey. Put some lime. Put some ginger and drink it. Pray over and say that by his stripes I am healed. I am not catching it. You are not a goalkeeper, last week I said. To be catching diseases. You are a citizen of Goshen and a child of God. Your body is exempted. Maranto Sabadiza. And all the firstborn, and look at this, verse 6. There shall be a great cry in all the land of Egypt, such as has never been, nor ever shall be again. Look at 7. But against any of the Israelites shall not so much as a dog move his tongue against man. <laughs> God is saying even a dog cannot even touch an Israelite or beast. That you may know that the Lord makes a distinction between the Egyptians and the, I want this word to seek in you. The Lord makes a distinction between the Egyptians and, and Israel. There is a, a mark of distinction upon your life. That is why the Bible says, so God, the thousand will fall. It shall not come near you. There is something that is upon you. There is something that you carry. In Goshen, you operate under a divine law. You don't operate by the laws of the country. There is an exemption clause upon your life as a citizen of Goshen. The law separates us. And I came to tell you, there is a difference in your life. In Goshen, that is where you can boldly declare, Kayada, my case is different. Can you say that to yourself? My case is different. I am a health worker. I go to the hospitals to help the people. But my case is different. I shall not contract the disease or contact the disease. Goshen enables us to operate under a different divine law of God. And I came to declare unto you that you live under a different law. And so because of that, COVID-19 cannot detect how you feel. Kayadosh. When you are in Goshen, let me break it down. When you are in Goshen, you, 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 you operate under a different health plan. There's a different health plan upon your life. Not the health bill, not the NHS. The health plan is in Exodus 15 verse 26. I am living in Goshen. I operate under a different health plan. If thou will, Genesis 15, 20 says, If thou will diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God, and do that which is right in his sight, and will give ear to his commandment, and keep all his statutes, I will put. Not, so God is saying, there is a, it can touch everybody. But as long as you are drawn close to me, Goshen, you are drawn near, you are close to me. Draw near to me, and I will draw near to you. James 4, verse 7, 8, 9. It says, if thou wilt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God, and do that which is right in his sight, and will give ear to his commandment, listen to the promise, and keep all his statutes, I will put none of these diseases upon thee, which I have brought upon the Egyptians. Why? For I am the Lord that healed thee. That tells you there is a divine health insurance on your life in Goshen. I repeat. There is a divine health insurance on your life in Goshen. 
There is a divine economic policy and plan for your life. Your economic life is not guided by the recession, by, by Brexit, by whatever. I live in a hippie country. No way. As a child of God, your divine economic plan comes from, from Philippians chapter 4. But my God shall supply all your needs according to his riches in glory. In Christ Jesus. But my God, so your divine economic supply does not come about by what is happening in the world. God bring the manna to his people when there was no food. So I want you to know that in this pandemic, when our heart is broken and weary and worried, I came to tell you, but my God shall supply all my need according to his riches in glory. The great provider will provide for you. Your life will never be decided by your salary, by your income, by the job you do. There is a grace of financial, economic prosperity and increase over your life. When you are living in Goshen, the enemy also cannot touch your life. There is a divine immunity from disaster. The enemy knows that they cannot touch your life. Many times we are touched because we are scared of the enemy and we give room to the devil. But when you know that the enemy cannot touch your life, he can touch your life. When you're living in Goshen, your security apparatus, your security confidence, your security hope is in Psalm 91 verse 1. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High, he who is drawn close to God, he who is connected to God, he who lives in Goshen, shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Your security is not decided by your state, security services, government, or by anything around you. I don't have time. I was going to read through Psalm 91 all the way, but I'm going to postpone that. Take your time and read through it. It tells you, there shall no evil befall you, verse 10, nor any plague or calamity come near your tent, for he will give his angels charge over you to accompany and defend and preserve you in all your ways. They shall bear you up on their hands, lest you dash your foot against a stone. You shall tread upon the lion and the adder, the young lion and the serpent shall you tremble under foot, because he has set his love upon me. Because he has drawn close to me, because he has he is come to Goshen, he says, I will deliver him. I will set him on high because he knows and understands my name. You can't know God when you are far away from him. And as you are hearing the sound of my voice, this is the time to repent and come to Jesus. This is the time. Don't be afraid. There is a shelter. The shelter, in, 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 when God wanted to destroy the world, he created an ark and he put his own beloved in there. There is an ark, run to the ark. Run to the shelter, draw close to God. Forget about your pomposity, your pride. There is no God. I don't believe in God. The world came out of Big Bang. You know, I, I don't pay time, but everything is going well for me. But God is saying that if you draw close to him, because he has set his love upon me, I will deliver him. I will set him on high because he knows and understands my name, my mercy. He trusts in me. I will never forsake him nor leave him. That is the promise of God. He shall call upon me and I will answer. This is the time. To call upon God. He is ready to hear you and answer you. Verse 16. With long life will I satisfy him. And show him my salvation. Long life is your portion. Long life is your portion. Long life is your portion. Hallelujah. Genesis 47, 27. Describing where... Joseph's parents came, and Israel dwelt in the land of Egypt, in the country of Goshen, and they had possessions, and grew, and multiplied exceedingly. Hallelujah. There's more I can talk about, but we have, we have planned an hour, and I'm going to leave here. I was going to tell you, what does living in Goshen mean for you? It means I can find peace in the midst of destruction. What does living in Goshen mean? I'll give you a quick take point. All my people don't be scared. I'll do it in three minutes. It means I can find peace in the midst of distraction. It's your heart at peace. If you dwell, if you dwell in Goshen, let your heart be at peace. Disaster cannot come here. It means I can have, I can find hope in troubled times. Where is your hope? Even Boris Johnson has got it. Even the health minister has got it. Even Prince Charles has got it. Ladies and gentlemen, you live in Goshen. You are not by the systems of this world. It means I can find hope 
in troubled time. What does living in God say? It means a state of abiding in the will of God. It means enjoying peace and calmness in the midst of whirlwind, storm, pestilence, calamity. Enjoying peace and calmness. It means having light in your camp when there is darkness all around you. Kayadash. It means not being controlled by the national figure statistics. Ten people have died. Two people near you. Listen, when you live in Goshen, those statistics don't deal with you. It means the glory of God is shining upon you in the midst of darkness and harassment all around you. The glory of the Lord. When you live in Goshen, the glory of the Lord is upon you. It means exemption from plagues and storms. Maya. It means when everyone has given up on you, the glory of God comes and manifests on you. And finally, it means finding a voice to praise God despite the persecution. Can you praise God? Can you thank God in what you are going through, in what is happening in our world? I came to let you know, God wants to help us. If you have not taken Jesus as your Lord and your personal Savior, you need to give Jesus a chance. Because when you are living in the land of Goshen, there is a mark that says, touch not my anointed. Touch not. It means my case is different. How can I guarantee a Goshen experience? Give your life to Jesus. Make Jesus your Lord and your personal Savior. And I came to tell you, if you have believed in Jesus, this is the time to have confidence. I am living in Goshen. And so I am not worried. I am not perplexed. I am not overwhelmed. If your work with God is not right, this is the time to fix it. This is as you are home, fix it. Morning to 12 every day, fast and seek God. Not because you are afraid, but you want to reconnect. If you are, if you are not praying, pray. If we're not studying the Bible, study the Bible. If we're not giving today, it's an opportunity to give an offering. Show something. Listen, the plague will bypass you. Look for the church account and give an offering. Not because you are giving it to bless anybody. You are giving it to secure your own life. Last week, did you give offering? Today, give an offering. And of God, with your giving and with your substance, live for God. Call somebody. People are afraid. Call them and talk to them about Jesus. Raise hope and confidence in them. And finally, I want to give the chance to anybody who has not known Jesus as their Lord and personal Savior. I want you to say this after me. I, 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 actually, I want everybody to say it. Families, let your children say it. Let your children say it. Just let's all chorus it and, and, and say it loud. Oh, Heavenly Father, today I give my heart to you. I rededicate myself to you. I ask you to be the Lord and the Savior of my life. I acknowledge I am a sinner. Only your blood can wash me. Wash me, cleanse me, and make me a child of God. Qualify me to be a citizen of Goshen. Drawn close to you so that I can receive the benefit of living in Goshen. I thank you for my salvation. In Jesus' name, amen. If you said this prayer for the first time, we want to help you. Call the number 079 or send us a message. Somebody will call you and will help you in your life journey. I know that this message is a timely word. The whole night God was pouring into my spirit. I am loaded with it, but because of time, I'm going to stop here. May the Lord bless and keep you, cause his face to shine upon you. May he watch over you and do you good. May he surround you with his angels so that no evil shall come near you. I plead the blood of Christ over you and your house. I cover you in the blood. There shall be no disaster or harm that shall come near you. The Lord keep you and preserve you. Cause his face to shine on you and do you good. You are blessed and cannot be cursed. I want you to scream it loud. I am living in Goshen. Say it again. I am living in Goshen. And so there will be a distinction about my life. The things that happen to the people in the world cannot happen to me. In Jesus' mighty name. I love you, the love of the Lord. Once again, Pastor George Kweku, ICGC Greater Grace Temple here in Barking, Essex, in London. If you don't have a church home, 
Join us, Facebook, ICGC Greater Grace Temple. Every morning, we do morning of power this week. You log on to George Craco on Facebook. I'll be leading us to pray about the issues in our world and trust God. And then on Sunday, we'll be coming here 11 to 12 until we resume. When we resume, we'll be going back to Gazdorin Primary School, where God is doing an amazing thing with our lives. I know that you'll be blessed when you join the church family. I want you to have faith in God. Look to God and know I am living in Goshen, so I will not be a victim. All our normal meetings continue. Intercessors praying Monday, Wednesday using zoom church on thursday using zoom morning to fr monday to friday morning of power i'll be with you six to seven in the morning and visit somebody call somebody send somebody some credit some money some food do something let's be one and let's keep her in this season in jesus mighty name i love you with the love of god have a fruitful week till i come your way same time next week it is pastor g yours truly i see this greater grace temple i love you the lord be with you and prosper you in Jesus' name. Amen.